Welcome to the So Social Radio Show. I'm your host, Richard Martin, along with my amazing co-host, Sherry Martin, and we are the WCN Interactive Team, business growth, marketing, and social media consultants, helping you to dream it, plan it, build it, and most importantly, successfully do it. For growth, prosperity, and success. And each Wednesday at 12 noon on talknetworkradio.com, we share tips and techniques to grow you and your business, plus demystify social media and marketing for you so that you can have more fun. And my favorite, more profits. Yes, yes, yes. And we also want to make sure our listening audience knows that they can give us a like there on Facebook at So Social Radio Show. Let us know what topics you'd like to hear a conversation on. You can also look at the top pin post there on So Social Radio Show to learn more about our conversation today with our fabulous guest who we'll introduce to you in just a few moments. And remember, we're all about education and we want to bring you what you want to learn. So if there is a specific topic within social media or marketing, make sure you go ahead and uh, give us, uh, you know, Give us a message there on our So Social Radio Show page, and we'll have a conversation with you. And, um, you know, if you would like to be one of our guests, we'd love to definitely have a conversation with you if you'd like us to showcase your expertise as well. So go to So Social Radio Show there on Facebook and just let's have a conversation. Sounds like fun. Well, Richard, why are we here today? And, um, and who and who has helped us be here today, I should say. <laughs> Let me think about this for a while. I don't know. <laughs> Our sponsors who uh, are why we are here, and that is beginning with Toastmasters, a world leader in communication and leadership development. Find out how you can improve your speaking and leadership skills. Visit ToastmasterD84.org. That's Toastmasters d84.org. Also, Business Acceleration Summit. This is a rapid growth business summit for social entrepreneurs to mastermind and grow their business while creating a deeper impact on their clients and community. Make sure you register for the next Business Acceleration Summit at businessaccelerationsummit.com. Uh, the next event will be in September 28th through the 30th, and it's going to be here in Melbourne, Florida, beachside at the beautiful Crown Plaza Oceanfront. Again, go to businessaccelerationsummit.com. And everythingbrevard.com, a Brevard County, Florida community website, keeping you up to date on everything that's happening in Brevard and get your business listed too. And then Sheer Artisan Salon and Art Gallery, a full service salon specializing in hair color, skin care, and makeup. They're located in the shops of West Melbourne, Florida at 1533 West New Haven Avenue. The salon also hosts a gallery of fine artwork from our local artists. So you can go in there and not only come out with a beautiful hairstyle, but also a beautiful art piece as well. Contact Sheer Artisans at 321-729-8989. That's 321-729-8989. And Richard, this is the week of your big event. So remind our listeners, you have last chance today to register for this Thursday or tomorrow's workshop. <laughs> Absolutely so. Last chance. We're going to be discussing building influence through social media. And uh, we all want to know how to stand out on social media, be known as that go-to person in your industry. So we're going to be working diligently uh, in a two-hour workshop over at Buena Vida Estates out in West Melbourne from 930 in the morning to 1130. It's going to be an intense two-hour packed workshop where you are going to understand your why and the why of your listeners. Right. And that is, again, tomorrow, August 10th. You can actually go get all the details and register at bit.ly slash SM brand message. That's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash SM brand message. Make sure you get your seat reserved because this is a powerful workshop. All righty. So I am excited because we have a very good friend of ours here in the studio with us, uh, Miss Charlie Mays. So hello, Charlie. Hi, Sherry and Richard. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to have you with us. I know that this is a topic that... Um, is near and dear to your heart that we're going to be talking about today. So before we get started talking about 
color and the emotion of color and the brand imaging of color, everything about color. I want to let our listeners know who you are so they'll get better acquainted with you. So Charlie is actually, she is a color expert and she actually started her color and aesthetic training in Chicago, Illinois. Since 1983, she's been privileged to provide color consulting services, instruction and products in over 40 countries. She teaches individuals, business owners and entrepreneurs how to face their clients in the best light possible and put more commas in their paychecks. I like that. Charlie has published numerous articles and co-authored the book, Your Eye for Color, which I believe is available on your website, right? Yes, it is. That's colortools.com. Correct. And also Charlie's extensive experience is based on the scientific study of color, a study a strong believer in the effect and result color plays. She has empowered countless individuals with her exceptionally unique approach to the world of color. She teaches and inspires individuals with techniques that enhance their appearance through the power of color. I know she's been a very good teacher for me. And Charlie also specializes in personal enhancement, professional color analysis, bridal embellishment, and color for home and office decor. She's proven to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary through color. Also maintaining a reputation as a leader in her field, she's well known for her timeless methods and seminars. And as we know, in today's fast paced world of communications, it is important to be heads and shoulders above your competition in your efforts to get noticed. In many cases, your client has already seen you before they meet you. 90% of a buyer's decision to do business with you or buy your product is immediately based on color first. So who knew, you know, as Charlie says, what color are you communicating to your audience? So, wow. Again, (laughs) welcome, Charlie. (laughs) Oh, thank you, Sherry. It's funny because color is, color is its own language. It, it, it covers our whole lives, every aspect of it. And a lot of people just don't know how to use it to their advantage. So oh, I would agree with that. I mean, I know, and, and as you say, it isn't just, as an image consultant, it isn't just about your appearance. It's personal. It's your appearance throughout everything that you do in business and even in your home. Exactly, exactly. It, it's, color is emotional, and, but that's, that's um, physiologically in addition to aesthetically. So it, like red can... It, um, actually raise your blood pressure, things like that. So, um, so it's not just what you, what you like, what you see. It's not just your visual world, although that's the first thing that you see. Oh, definitely. I mean, we all know wh- wherever you are, whether it is in a book, online, on a website, or anything on social media, those images are going to be, attract you more than words. Exactly. So how, does, how do they pop? How do they look? And those are, those are things that you have to consider. Today, we'll talk a, a little bit about business and how color affects your business and your branding. And I know, Richard, you touch on this because you teach such a great branding workshop. So um, uh, color, when you think about your business, you have to pay attention to three specific areas. Number one, you want your personal, your personal appearance because you are your image. You are your mm-hmm. brand image. You also have your branding Again, color goes along with that because the color has to say what your brand, what your, um, uh, what your, what your theme is, what your, what your emotional, right. um, you know, uh, relationship to that. And then it's, again, it's psychological. So what does your customer feel when they see that color? Is it, is, and is it relative to your business? Well, you know, that goes along with really then understanding who your customer is, because I would say that an age or a demographic might appeal to different colors differently. That's true. That's true. And those are those are definitely things that you have to consider. Number one, it's, it's not just you. It, it's your product. Mm-hmm. Like you said, who's your target market? What's what's their age? What's their are they male and female? Uh, an example would be female uh Women, women prefer the softer colors, the softer blues and the purples and, and greens. And men prefer, yeah, they like bright blue. They like black because it, it seems powerful. But you put a purple in front of them or browns in front of either group, browns and oranges, are not right up there with favorite colors. So 
men and women do perceive color and feel color differently. Oh, I can understand that. I know we discuss that when we, Richard and I do, when we're looking at colors, when we're trying to do stuff in the house. I want my way. <laughs> you know, look at us when we were looking over that one, well, it never used to just be the one wall, but we did our whole living room in a Tibetan red. Right. And it just was too empowering for me. But as we slowly did some renovation, we got down to where only one of those walls now are Tibetan red. And I can live with that. <laughs> and, it, and it's funny because people people feel good surrounded by specific colors. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people feel, feel uh, warmer in autumn colors. Or spring colors because those are those are sunny colors, mm -hmm. all right. Um, autumn colors are warm. You feel the fireplace, but they they can't wear them successfully. If they put them on, they look like death warmed over. I was saying that so is there is a difference between <laughs> between <laughs> your personal appearance, the, the 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 image that you're showing to reflect your brand and mm -hmm. your image, and um, what what you feel what you feel comfortable in. So well, I find that interesting because I know that everyone has a favorite color. So they tend to go out and buy clothes in that favorite color without even thinking about maybe it not looking or making their appearance look better. I don't know how to well, say that's that exactly. easier. <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> if, if you dress in a color that's not complimentary to your, un your skin uh -huh. undertones, you can really look tired. You can look like you don't feel good. Wow. Um, it, can, it can actually make you look up to 10 years older than you really are just because you're you're not ref it's the color is not reflective of your internal and your skin tone radiance mm -hmm. now you have a specific tool that you sell and that you also have uh, in your business that someone can actually use to determine what color is best with their skin tones correct right right that's the base of color tools product line um is is personal personal uh, color analysis and and I, I believe in making it simple so I don't clutter your mind but our, our process is very very simple it is based on science it's based on four color groups mm -hmm. but we make your shopping life easier we make your wardrobe easier declutter the closet so we want your your personal appearance remember every time you go out you are a part of someone else's visual world yeah and what do you want that to say if you run out to the grocery store and you're dressed like you just got out of the pool, but you have on a, an olive drab shirt that makes you look like you died last week, <laughs> then, then you don't really want to run into anybody that you know. I mean, it might be comfortable, but but again, I understand. Consider consider where you're going. Consider your appearance all the time because you are your brand, <laughs> right, Richard? It sounds good. No, I no, I, I I like what you what you said there. Now. I don't always do that, fessing up just being true, but, you know, running out to the hardware store sometimes or going down to the, the local knick-knack shop or something, you know, it's, you just go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're all guilty of it. We are all guilty of it. Oh, I know. You're, and you're hoping that you don't run into anybody, but guess what happens? <laughs> you run into everybody and anybody. Um, I have that happen many, many times. I'm just trying to run to the store, throw the hair back, you know, and all that fun stuff. But I, I hear what you're saying about color really will determine and how approachable exactly, you are. Exactly. Um, if you look your best, if you look like you care, like you um, are confident, those colors, are, that that's that saying that you have integrity. Really, is what is what it is. Mm -hmm. I have confidence, and it doesn't have to be business bank or blue. But I have confidence. I know what looks good on me. I know what my face is to the world, and that's that's who I am. Mm -hmm. So if you coordinate your closet, just incidentally. You don't have to worry about picking colors that go together or that look good on you. <laughs> I mean, you always put your best face forward. And it's, it, no, interesting setup. To, so when I was listening to that, it sounded a little bit like the, the chicken and the egg scenario, which, which came first. You know, are we picking our colors? Are we picking what we want to wear that day? And, and how, how does that all psychologically um, put us in a state of mind? When you're, when you are, when you're dressed in your colors that are right for your undertone, you absolutely radiate. You, you look better. You feel better. You just know it. Color is energy. And when the right ones are surrounding your face, then you can conquer the world, really. 
I like how you said that, you know, it really is because I, I see his color, both energy and then emotion. It right. brings out that emotion uh, with others. So, and, and I know myself, I like to dress in black. <laughs> We're always taught that black covers up excess weight, you know, so I, I see myself and a lot of other women, we dress in black. I don't anymore since I've been coaching with Charlie. She has shown me how to make sure I wear certain lines and certain lengths and certain colors with different things, but I still like my black pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it so when when it comes to your business, the first the first step is do you look good? Do you look like somebody I want to do business mm-hmm. with? Okay. Even speakers, a lot of speakers, they've got a great product, a great they know their stuff, but if they don't look like somebody I want to do business with, I'm not going to do business mm-hmm. with them. They just don't look like they got their act together. Okay, so now we're talking about okay, your business, your appearance. How about when you walk into someone's office? What how does, you know, do we need to worry, think about, not worry, but think about what our office is saying to someone walking in? Oh, well. right, right. A lot of times they say the cluttered mind is, is, is a, a, the cluttered desk is a sign of a, a, a cluttered mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people say the clutter is um, brilliant. Cre- so. Yeah, creative. <laughs> So you have to sit down and you have to figure yeah. out what works for you. Okay, but um, color wise, color, I mean, color wise, an office. There's colors that you can paint your wall that will give you energy. Mm-hmm. Um, there are colors that that will subdue things so you can make things pop. So it's all about putting colors together, mm-hmm. and you have to be careful when you do that, even for your branding and your logo, because if you put two colors together, both colors change, and you want to make sure you want to make sure that it gives the right message talk to how, how, how do colors change I, yeah, and I, I know, I, I know I like the that. base color is still the base color but i know you're talking about a mental process somewhere if, if you take uh two file folders a, a red one and a green one and you look at the red one first and then you look at the green one first your your brain is interpreting first the red and then the green but if you put the red and the green together they're going to look different because scientifically they absorb and reflect light at different wavelengths so they will look different to the eye Okay, and, and, and in business, when you're branding, when you're using colors to brand, be careful of, of color combinations such as red and green because it, it denotes Christmas in our language. Oh, yeah. So there are a lot of colors that are not just um, visually appealing to the Western world. Again, you've got to go back to your target audience. You have to go back to what is their message, what's their culture, mm-hmm. what's their age. Um, white wedding dresses in the Western world are, are red in Chinese. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you know, you you have to understand the culture and and your audience. That makes that makes total sense. And I'm also thinking, when you're actually starting to create your business before, you, and I know many people will kind of start thinking of their logos before they start thinking of their business concept and who their clients are. That they probably that might be backwards. You want to start thinking about who you want to attract. Because that's going to help you determine the type of colors that you're putting in your logo. Your business and your brand. What is your business? What's your target market? The nutritionist, they'll, they'll want something spring, green. Um, they are not going to serve you black. There's not very many appealing foods that are black. So your nutrition industry has a tendency to go to, go to green. Um, color is the first thing that's noticed. So uh, you have to consider color when you consider your brand and your logo. And again, remember, those are two different things. You are your brand. You're what your brand stands for. Mm-hmm. The integrity, um, the, 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 um, uh, the, 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 I don't know. I don't know how, what else to call it. Well, I mean, it's your personality too. Ex- exactly. Exactly. You know, and your, and your business has a personality, not just an, just an individual businesses have personalities. Mm-hmm. So it really needs to it needs Follow to be authentic. Co- it needs to be. It needs to be the integrity, mm-hmm. and it needs to be consistent with your industry. Ex- yeah. Okay. I mean, you, you brought up an, an interesting point there. The, the business has its own colors, personality, and everything. What happens when, like Sherry and I are, are partners? Okay, we, we we have WCN Interactive. She has her side. I have my side. How does how do the colors interact between us individually, or do they? They do when you when you go to put your best face forward. Your your um, the colors in your logo are absolutely superb. The WCN, the purple is is um, it's kind of like royalty. It's kind of like um, a little more elite. 
the um, I orange. Like the, I like the, the orange, royalty better. The or, well, <laughs> and, and, uh, again, but the orange, the orange is. Um, I, I kind of call it a declassifier because it just means it's open to everybody. I mean, it's a very friendly color. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and then the green brings the freshness of spring to it. So your your three colors on your on your logo are absolutely superb for your business because it is always changing. It is there there is always something new, something green, something growing. Oh, I okay? love that. And, I never and, thought my logo that way. And 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 orange is you are out there for everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, at least to start with. You take your business to the next level by further defining your target market. But again, and purple, that's your that's your authority. Mm-hmm. That's your um that's your um it's it's part of your brand aware part of your brand awareness is part mm-hmm. of who you are. I like the that sound of cool. that. I like yeah, the sound of like that. that. <laughs> we did good, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were mixing those colors together and he was like, purple and green. I go, wait a minute. I like purple and green. So <laughs> <laughs> I think you came up with the orange, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. It, yep. It's yeah. funny though, because when you say purple, everybody has their own version. If you say mm-hmm. yellow, everybody has their own version. Oh, yeah. Okay. This I like one. I tell brides, there's three thousand shades of white. There is Who one knew? that's best for you. There's 3,000 shades of blue. <laughs> Which one is for you? You know? So you really have to consider things when you look at your brand and when you look at marketing, when you look at your logo. Um, when we talk about logos, um, the golden arches and the, and the red sign on, on Mickey D's, the yellow and red, yellow mm-hmm. and red. But guess what? Yellow and red is ketchup and mustard together. <gasps> guess <laughs> oh, what? Oh, wow. Guess what? I don't know if that was intentional, but it's something to consider. Yeah. Okay? Makes sense to me. Okay. Well, now when you're thinking about that, you know, when you have your colors and your logos and your business and you need that consistency, what about um, companies that have their employees wear those colors, like in a shirt or something. I mean, that's not always going to look good on some people if their if their complexion or their hues don't match with those. Colors. I'm going to say it's 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 if the company dictates that, that's fine. That's again, you're when you're on their clock, you're representing that company and their mm-hmm. and their mm-hmm. their colors and their logo. Um, if you're in an industry say, such as a hair salon, when uh, I had one girl who's who's the, the salon said black and white, black and white, black and white, because they wanted to cater to the high end, which was their perception. But a lot of these girls weren't making any money because when they dressed in black and white, they looked like black and white, <laughs> black and white. They, they yeah. did not. They did they not look that confident. They, and... they didn't. And they didn't look alive. They really mm-hmm. didn't. Mm-hmm. So when I went in and, had, and did an evaluation with the owner, let them wear just a scarf around their neck. So. And all of a sudden, their whole face perks up. They're radiant again. Wow. They, they look alive. That's cool. And tips increased. It was, it was amazing how, how that difference was. Well, I, I know myself when I start, you know, I'm a very casual person. So I love my jeans and my tennis shoes and such. But I know when I'm out in um, the business world, I need to, you know, dress a little differently. And I know myself, I would cover myself up uh, with the black. And you, and you, we, we sat and we talked about that. So just understanding that adding the way my the lines were on my on my shirts, making sure they were pointed down, and making sure I had a necklace or something with that that was kind of following flowing with that. Those are so important. And I think when you're creating a logo, you have to think that same way. And Nike's co- Nike's swoosh. Yeah. Okay. It's recognizable anywhere. It doesn't matter what color it is. It doesn't matter what the background is. It's a, it's a white swoosh, right? And it doesn't even have words, okay? But everybody knows it, right? Everybody knows it. Coca-Cola, that, that script little Coca-Cola. It's mm-hmm. red and white. Everybody mm-hmm. knows it, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, so when it comes to, yes, when, you, when, when dressed, you want to make sure that your face is, at least is surrounded by your best colors. You can always add and, and change out a wardrobe later, mm-hmm. but at least around your face, that's, that's got to be your best color. That's okay. I, I find that just very interesting. And I, and I know um, hearing how we need to make sure we're conscious of that within our business so that our business also has, is approachable. Exactly. Exactly. In the color that we're exactly. using. Exactly. Exactly. Um, when you're talking business colors, uh, you you do want to real, remember that there is an emotion tied to color. Okay, so it's not just what am I seeing visually; it's what what emotion because emotion is what's going to sell your sales message. Emotion is what is going to drive that action. Totally, totally agree agree with that. You know, you can have the best presentation in the world if you can't put a smile on your face or make your eyes pop and look really sharp. 
<laughs> it's going nowhere. Exactly. Even the even the product presentation, mm-hmm. uh, packaging, things like that. It exactly, all has to yes. be consistent. <laughs> has to be consistent. Well, let's talk a little bit about the emotions and colors, that all these colors have different emotions. So I'd love you to share with our audience the different, you know, like on this, on a color emotion guide that I know I keep on my desk. And I think you're the one that introduced me to this. And I use this when I'm putting together images for myself, for clients, when I'm putting together you know, the memes on social media, or when I'm even coming up with a, an image for a workshop or something. I really look at the type of colors that it is in that image. So would you want to share with our audience about the different emotions that sure. each color and, and And I'll give you a couple represents. of examples. Um, yellow. Uh, yellow is sunny. It's lemony. It's warm. Okay. It's optimistic. All right. So those are those are are things that you want to be. Those are emotions that you are targeting that you are emotions that you are sending to your your customer. Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Are you warm? I mean, you don't do sunscreen with with um, black uh, rays coming out of it. I mean, sunshine, (laughs) sunshine is is, is sunscreen is is sunshiny. It just seems inviting and just exactly. uh, And and it's kind of a warm of a warmth to Mm -hmm. it as well and inviting and and uh, sounds like, you know, something you really can relax with and have fun with. Mm -hmm. And as you go from yellow, you start headed towards red, but then you get into oranges in between there. And again, I said, oranges, oranges, Mr. Friendly. It's, um, it's, for example, Home Depot, Home Depot, orange and white. They're the construction people. All right. That's symbolic of them. Guess what else is orange and white? The barricades on your construction, on your road construction. Oh, they are. Orange and white, orange and white, orange and white. So take a look at your industry. Take a look at the message that you're trying to send. And it's really uh, interesting. I never <laughs> thought about it that way. And I'm thinking, though, but when I think of orange, sometimes I can think of some really uh, bright oranges that kind of hurt the eyes. So you have to be conscious of the, of the, of the tone as well, right, of right. that color? right. Right. You know, right. That right. is interesting. I never thought about that before about the, when I look at the, I'm going to be out there looking every, at everything now and thinking, wow, what is that saying to me? Red. Okay. Red. Again, we talked about red a little bit mm-hmm. with Coca-Cola. Oh. All right. Um, Ace Hardware. That's another one is red and white. Mm-hmm. All right. So, but again, there, there are images that you even see those, even though they're graphic, you can even see them if they're in black and white. They're recognizable. Mm-hmm. So don't get carried away with too many colors. Because, again, two colors, they'll change. You get any, any more than three colors in, in a graphic, in a logo, mm-hmm. then your brain is going to get confused. It's not going to know what to do with them. That, that is a very interesting point there. So when you're making, uh, developing or creating a logo, you really want to make sure that um, your logo is going to look good in black and white as well then. Depending, so you don't, like you say, you don't want to just saturate with all the different colors. Right, right. Um, you want to be consistent. Uh, blue, all right, there's a, there's a lot of blues out there, a lot of blues. Um, jewelry, high-end luxury was typically um, royal, navy, black, gold. Mm-hmm. But guess what Tiffany's did? They bucked the system. They said, oh, we want to be different. We want to be known. And guess what? You've got to forget me, not Tiffany Blue. Oh, It's yes. still high-end, isn't it? Everybody recognizes yes. that Tiffany box. That blue. Oh, abs- absolutely, yeah. And it's and it's because they didn't want to be part of the ocean full of everyone. They wanted to stand apart, but they did it with a little bit of finesse. Well, considering you know, not that Walmart's in com- competition with them, but I mean, one of all Walmart's logos is kind of a pale blue that they use. So you know, the differentiator there. I mean, other than just physically looking at what it looks like when you walk in the well, store, Walmart's, but you know. Walmart's blue is uh, very uh, banker blue-ish, okay? Mm-hmm. So uh, th- they want you to be trust them and trust them. But again, that, that yellow, that little yellow um, sunshine sprinkle that goes on the, on the uh, logo yeah. is, is yellow to orange. That's why, because they're, they're for everybody. Trust me, I'm for you. I'm for everybody. Well, and again, that gets in that different shade of the color, because I think Adele Computers, I mean, blue is a very trustworthy color, gives strength and Dell computers. If anybody, you know, if anybody asks what kind of computer I prefer, I say Dell. Mm-hmm. I, I have that confidence mm-hmm. in Dell. Mm-hmm. 
So again, I don't know if it's the blue. Uh, well, <laughs> it's because you have a daughter-in-law that works for Bell. But again, <laughs> but again, the electronics industry. I mean, it's very high end, very silvery, very mm-hmm. black, very yes. gold, things like that. Okay, but look what Apple did. They came in with an Apple logo. You recognize that whether it's colored or not. Yes, All absolutely. Right? That is true. And, and that is red, true. And it's just it is just a, a a graphic. So you don't have to have words. Birds, bees. Burt's bees, for example, they're all natural things. You would mm-hmm, think mm-hmm. you would think um, that would be green, green like I, like yeah. all of the like all of the nutritional, good for you, no GMO stuff. All right, mm-hmm. but guess what? Burt's bees did. They went with a honeycomb yellow. Mm-hmm. It was opposite of what all their competitors were doing, and they stand out. Yeah, I was going to say because I I know that that's what I think of when the beeswax. I kind of go with the color of the bee. So when I think of them, I think of bees. Mm-hmm. Is that interesting? So maybe they mm-hmm. went along with the color of the the black and the yellow with the bees too. Okay. So, so always always interesting when you talk about things like this that we don't really think about very often. We just do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know me getting dressed in the morning. <laughs> I I, dra- I grab the closest cleanest thing that's been ironed. <laughs> and, and Richard, a, a lot of a lot of you do that. Uh, I mean, a lot of people do that, and that's why when you when you have a, a personal color analysis done. You coordinate the items that are in your closet. So you can match any top with any bottom. Ask my husband. He can go in there, any top, any bottom, and it will coordinate. I don't have to worry about what he's putting on. Does it match? So you coordinate that wardrobe so you have the things that don't look good on you, have been donated to your favorite charity, (laughs) and they're not taking up space in your closet. So you're so, trying to tell me I need to go get a new wardrobe. No, huh? I'm just I'm just telling you how how I'm simple it, how you. simple it can be. Yeah. I mean, you know, well, s- well, instead of going into overwhelm. He teases me when I get on that kick of doing my spring or my fall cleaning, and I go into the closets. I put all the colors together for him, and and he's this is just so silly. This isn't going to stay this way. I says, well, it should, but it, again, so that he goes in there. He loves his blues. He loves, you know, he has a couple shirts that I, I think everything you have has blue or green in it. I don't know if that's good or, or not, but I mean, I'm thinking about um, almost everything you have. Most everything I do has has blue in it or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. Yeah. You know, just I find it fascinating to think about color this way, because, again, I don't know if I ever really thought about walking into a business and looking at the color and wondering what type of emotion I should be having. But I do know that it actually happens. Yes, it does. Because there are some places I won't go back to. Yep. And that you don't feel good. Yeah, you just don't feel good, and and for whatever reason that was that's their corporate color. So is that the psychology of colors then? If they didn't, if if they did it on purpose, shame on them. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> if they if they did it by accident, oh well, they need a consultation. Uh, but the thing is, is are they reaching their audience? Mm-hmm. You go into a UPS office, okay? Guess what? What's brown do for you? Those brown and gold, okay? Brown is is kind of everybody. They're earth. They're down to earth, and the gold is a little bit of luxury. I mean, a little bit of I'm I'm there for everybody. A little bit of, but I'm a little upper class. I'm a little I'm a little bit hmm. better being gold versus yellow. Yeah, think of FedEx then. They're blue and orange, right? FedEx? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what's the difference again, between them and UPS? Again. Okay. Again. Interesting. Them and UPS, your FedEx, again, your blue is trustworthy. trustworthy. There's integrity there. Mm-hmm. And your red orange is, um, they, they're inspiring you to take some action. They want to catch your eye, but they want to, they want you to take some action. They want you to, they want, they want you to get excited. With them. <laughs> that is fascinating. I don't know. I, love it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're talking about the brand message about, you know, your brand you message, have you ever thought about the, the way the color flows with that? Me? Yeah. Absolutely not. But you will now. I will now. <laughs> okay. okay. But again, but again, when Richard teaches about branding, he he gets down to the messaging part. He wants Correct. to get down mm-hmm. to the messaging. So once they find their target audience, now you can start reaching out to the color of what that pretty little logo mm. or logo font is going to be. All right. When you look at color tools, when I started 30 years ago, um, it was geared mainly towards the Mary Kay, the pink ladies, you know, the, the women. Mm-hmm. But as, I, as my studies have evolved and, and the courses I've taken... Um, we have gone into um, business branding, graphics, and things like Mm -hmm. that. Now, I I don't profess to be a graphic designer at all, but I do know what colors that I want. Okay? And you're very good at that when you lay things out, like on your website or on your flyers and such. 
Because I would say that, I mean, I'm the first one to say I am not a graphic designer either. I love um, more on the words. I'm more of a wordsmith mm-hmm. where I'm, and, and a writer. And we were discussing this the other day. We were actually doing a layout on a, uh, a flyer. And I was like, I was just stumped. And I know it was our PowerPoint slide where I was changing and I, and I was just kind of, and he kept saying that color doesn't look there. It's just going to stay there, you know, but it didn't appeal to him. I'm thinking it's obviously bothering him. (laughs) So we better change that color (laughs) because I, I, and, and that just, I, I giggle about that because I'm thinking about what we're discussing now. I have to start thinking more, um, align when I'm putting not only the layout of something, but the color mm-hmm. as well. And mm-hmm. how, what would you say is that you said in a logo, no more than what, three colors? Three. So what about on a flyer or on a website or? Again, um, on your on your printed materials, the easiest thing to read is black print on a white background. Okay. All right. I agree. You can use colors as as bold, as highlight, as, as, a, as a headline. Um, that, w- that would be fine. But don't clutter it up with a lot of other colors because your message is going to get lost. Your brain isn't going to know what to focus on first. Mm-hmm. How about adding different color font uh, to stand out within maybe on a landing page or something? I see that. You know, have you seen those long landing pages? They have the big, bold red letters and they'll go down and maybe have, you know, some different colors, uh, maybe something in they gold. They should be pretty consistent. If they're doing a long landing page, they should be pretty consistent with their message. Okay. Mm-hmm. On our, on our women's prosperity network, uh, emails i mean register mm-hmm. now register and re- register now i mean it may tell you three times in that email but it's always the same color so you can uh-huh. you, your eye can look at it and you know what it says okay so don't change those colors up then that's yeah. very good to know very interesting that yeah. is yeah that i find that very interesting so does this color richard does this color uh a lesson i i'm gonna call it a color lesson <laughs> absolutely so, no this i is, mean what is it you know, what does I, it I say to that. you about our i mean Charlie was very kind when she was describing our logo, but what did you decide to do with our logo to make it even pop better? We took the, the, the basic rounded square and we made it look like a computer key so that your computer key, if you look at it really close, you can see a little bevel in, in the top and where it kind of washes down the side. So it, look, it looks like a keyboard, keyboard. key. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we changed that up when we decided to be more focused on our social media messaging and everything because we felt everybody's at the keyboard. Right. And so, and I know it, it took, we had uh, asked one of our graphic designers to change it. He loved our logo. He said, there's no reason to change it. So we had to find another designer to do it, to work with us because we, we knew what our vision was. We weren't going to change the colors or anything like that. We were just going to add a little rainbow effect on the line underneath our WCN. Um, and this other designer was able to capture it perfect. And I will say the other, the previous designer, when he saw it, he was impressed, but we obviously were not able to communicate what we were looking for to him, but he was very impressed with what the end result was was, Yeah, because it does make a statement as well as the colors because we weren't going to ever change those colors. And and that's, and that's another key thing is you have to be consistent, not Richard, you know, consistent, consistent with your message, Mm -hmm. your, your, your brand, your brand traverses you, what you do, um, your materials, your website, it, you know, it, it's everything, but you have to, and, and on your social media, and you know, you teach this, that, that you, you have to be consistent through all of your media, all of your, all of your presses, all of your releases. Ab- ab- no, absolutely. Once you establish that, uh, that message, mm-hmm. your brand message, it's got to be consistent. absolutely consistent across all platforms. Now, like we were saying early, you can have a long version, a short version, a three word version or whatever it is, but it, the message can't cannot change exactly well that's a good question then because i know there have been instances in larger companies and smaller companies like i said we made a transition in our business and we took our existing logo from our web development company into our uh, social media management or social media company and we kept the same colors but we wanted to make a little change um but there have been some instances where large companies have changed up their look and feel Oh, yes. What does that do oh, yes. to their... Yeah, I'm interested in what Some, your take on that is. If, if, it, if the bottom line, if it's staying with the integrity and the message and the, and the, um, the atmosphere of the, of the company, mm-hmm. then it's not too bad. But let me give you an example of somebody who bucked the system. 
okay? Heinz ketchup. Everybody knows what color ketchup is, right? Yep. In 2000, they came out with a ketchup that was green. I remember that. And it was in the easy squirt bottles for the kids. Oh, that was so cool. That was the, that was the highest grossing dollar change in, a, in an existing brand in history at that time. Mm-hmm. Right? They made $23 million on the, just, that, just that green ketchup. Okay? But guess what? It didn't last very long. Right? Everybody, everybody liked it, and moms loved it because everybody knew the, the green and the red, mm-hmm. the, the ketchup and mustard, okay? Mm-hmm. But maybe it's just because when you put green ketchup on red ketchup, it all looks like mud. <laughs> it, it didn't Ooh, last didn't very long. It, it doesn't does. appeal yeah, to me it, at all. It didn't yeah. last very long. It didn't last very long. But, so so yeah. um, um, companies do it all the time. Mm-hmm. Coke one or, or, or zero Coke, yes. zero one, all right? It was, it was a flop. I mean... So you can you can try to increase your brand, increase your offering, increase your product line. But mm-hmm. if you're not consistent with that true blue classic Coke, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. But well, didn't Starbucks do some switching on a logo a few years ago? I think it was, it was the, I think it was the Christmas colors, or yeah, it was, could be. Yeah, there was some that they had flopped. They tried to do that too. So what I'm hearing, we've you've used the word. Quite a, quite a bit today, consistency, but also you want to build that confidence to um, and be appealing to those that you want to attract. So, um, yes, things are always changing, but we have to be very conscious of what that change might do for our audience. We may lose them. Yeah, I mean, first thing you got to do with going back to what you talked about, all these companies that have done big changes, the executives got bored. Their marketing department got them bored and thinking a change needed to occur. But what was happening, they were all in the C-suite area, and nobody was talking to the person shoveling out their card at the purchase end of what we're, was what was they happening. weren't talking to the consumer either that's well, right that, that's where i'm going right yes Wasn't right doing the market research in right. other words they thought it was time for a change because we do get bored with things and i myself feel that way sometimes i try to change up my messaging but you know what if you switch it so fast and you're not and you're doing it for yourself you're not thinking about your audience or your customer consumer it can backfire fast mm-hmm. millennials you know, you have to also consider age, generation, uh, you know, what, mm-hmm. what your target mm-hmm. market is, okay? And now we're seeing the mill- millennials come really into some significant buying power, and they like bright colors because they like things that go fast. Yes. They want to see it fast. They, like they want to see it. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, but if you, if you, again, we talk about color, combining colors, too much, too much uh, blue and yellow and, and everything. Best Buy pulled it off. But in most cases, it reminds you of kids, the toddlers, the, mm-hmm. the Fisher-Price toys. What are some colors you should not mix together? I would, I, I would have to say it would be industry-specific. I mean, I couldn't okay. tell you definitely no for anything. Um, you want something that's catchy, eye-catching. Uh, people do business cards, black with white print or a dark or, or a, a, a print background with mm-hmm. white writing on it. That's a no-no. Uh, that's yeah. a no-no. Black print, white background, or light background. Too many times people take pictures or they've got scanning um, software. Mm, I mm-hmm. use I use card cam, and that white print on a back background doesn't doesn't scan very well. It's it's the business card is useless to me. That's very interesting. Yeah, but no, you're absolutely right. I see things sometimes. I'm thinking, what were they thinking? Um, yeah, really, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, you look at that, and you, you come up with these these things, and you know. Don't know where they found them. Must be somewhere else around the world where it's acceptable. But, you know, some of them go really weird on on putting that together. Now, we could go really weird if we were really trying to be dominant and, and, and break some ground. I could understand that. We, we, you're trying to push into a new area of your business. On, on that, I, I, could, I could see that because you, you want the controversy, the mental confusion, because you're trying to set the tone of of how you're trying to to put it all together, but for the most part, no. Nah. If you're if you're expanding a product line again, you know you may have a different icon or something for that product line, but you will still have keep your colors the same at least in in the initial stages. Office Depot and and Office Max, mm-hmm. uh, 
they were they were two they combined but they yes. they kept those colors consistent so you knew you were walking into one of those office stores and actually they're keeping both names for right. at least for now anyway right. for mm-hmm. the foreseeable future yeah, yeah so they thought they thought that through then so right. I, I liked i like to me they were thinking about the end user Exactly. Not to confuse them because right. nobody likes to be confused. So when that happens, that happens. We're down less than five minutes. So I want to make sure that everyone knows how they can get in touch with you, either connect with you on social media. Um, I understand you have an offer for them as well for our listeners today. I do. They can reach me at colortools.com and I have a special offer for them. If they do colortools.com slash so social, that's a forward slash so social. I will waive the fee on an initial assessment. If they just want to talk and find out uh, where they, if they need, how they need help, a color assistance, color making color decisions easy in their, either their wardrobe or their colors, their business, their office walls, um, whatever it is. But, but that will waive the fee on the assessments, the initial assessment. Oh, so. thank you. I'll definitely put that up on our So Social Radio Show page on Facebook and on the So Social Radio Show dot com website page as well. And um, is there an eight hundred phone number as There's well? There's a phone number. I can be reached at eight hundred two four eight. 7947. And as I said, the book that you are co authored is available at colortools.com, and that's Your Eye for Color. Yes. And I love when I um, was getting and gathering information for the show uh, today, some information you put. I think that is so cool. It's kind of a summary, and we're going to continue here for a few more moments. But what you said is you know, color evokes emotion, color evokes action, color changes everything color is everything. So is that your mantra? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I love that. Re- just remember, you're always a part of, uh, you're always a part of someone else's visual world. Mm. So use that color to your advantage, so whether it's a personal message, a business message, a logo, a product, a service, use that to your advantage. And it's psychological. So make sure that color is going to inspire your customer to take action. And that's really valuable information there. And again, things that we probably just don't think about, but yet we do react to. Yes. Yes. Oh, it, 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 it's it's amazing because I know a lot of us have logo fetishes and everybody's got to wear their logo or have the right logo on their car or on the boat or whatever it is that they, that they have. But then there's a the color factor and you've, you've enlightened me very well on, on how to start looking um, – with visual dynamics, I guess I should say. <laughs> I'm gonna... No, that was not a, an advertisement. <laughs> I'm going to do is get her color tool uh, and put it on your face and show you why you shouldn't wear that one green shirt of yours. <laughs> one, of my, one of the tools in my professional, in my professional product line is, is a face frame set that image consultants use to consult, to classify, to analyze their, their clients. So, mm-hmm. And that lets the clients see the difference, too. And so. they can purchase that at colortools.com yes. as well. Yes, we'll show Richard. And you, <laughs> <laughs> and I know uh, we're down about a minute and a half here, but I do know that you mentioned that you have clients all over the world. So just briefly share uh, who these clients are. Um, I've got clients in 40 countries right now. Some of them are individual users, personal users, but a lot of them are image consultants that uh, Netherlands, um, some of them run their own schools and wow. they use my products to teach their image consultants how to give their client the best experience and, and make color part of their world. And, it, and it's simple. I make it simple. That's fabulous. I, I love it. I, I will tell you, as a child growing up with red hair, I was told never to wear pink. And that was one color I've always shied from is pink. There's a pink for you, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Charlie will help me find that. Oh, gosh, this has been such enlightening and such fun having my bestest of friends here with me and sharing her expertise on color because again it is something that so many of us really don't put um, a thought uh, enough thought to it and it is so vital especially those of us in business so thank you charlie my pleasure my pleasure make your world colorful today okay oh, i love that i love that oh wow can you believe it <laughs> another hour has gone by but we thank you so much for joining us. It's it's been a been a pleasure and I'm going to go try some of your advices and <laughs> I will be in touch. I look forward to hearing from you, Richard.
Pico but we want to make sure everyone tunes in every Wednesday at 12 noon right here on talknetworkradio.com to the So Social Radio Show. And hopefully we'll see you at Richard's workshop tomorrow. Make sure you go to the bit.ly slash SM brand message and everyone make it a great social week.